how are you my dear class 10 english version students i hope everyone is also still fine today i have just also select very very important topics for your ssc exam here i also select the topics about the lesson 1.3 here's the 1.3 the classification of living beings here's the classification of living beings i also gave a chart here's the chart the first category is the i also write is the living world here's the living world please everyone see the board and please everyone write this the chart for your exam i also in the introduce i also explain about the living world and its history from the time of carolus linnaeus up to the middle of the 20th century, all living organisms are classified in one of two kingdoms, animals and plants. With the progress of science on the basis of data collected from time to time, for instance, the type of DNA or RNA in a cell features and the number of cells in a living body and mode of nutrition that a cell adopts, a five kingdom classification was proposed by R.H. Whitaker in 1969, then Margulis introduced a modified and expanded from the Whitaker's classification in 1974. She divided the whole living world into two super kingdoms and grouped the five kingdoms under these two super kingdoms. Here's the first kingdom and also the first super kingdom I just draw. Please see the words. Here's the first super kingdom one. The kingdom, super kingdom one, the pro. Here's the I just explained about the pro. Basically, is also the enzyme nucleus. And the super kingdom, the eukaryota, the recent nucleus is also the eukaryota. Here's the prokaryota, only kingdom one, the kingdom monera. Here's the eukaryota. Here's the basically four kingdom. Kingdom 2, Protista, Kingdom 3, Fungi, Kingdom 4, Planty, and the Kingdom 5, Animalia. Here's also the sub kingdom. Here's the sub kingdom, Planty. I also write the moss farm, gymnosperm, and angiosperm. My dear students, here's in the introduce. I also explain first super kingdom, the prokaryota. They are primitive prokaryotic, having no structure distinct nucleus and microscopic unicellular organisms. Kingdom 1 monera. Characteristics These are mostly unicellular filamentous. Filament is constituted by vertically connected cells, one after another, or colonial. Though chromatin material is present, there is no nuclear membrane is present, there is no nuclear membrane or Nucleolus in their cells. No plastids, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticuli are there, but ribosome is present. The cell divides through a process of binary fission. Their chief mode of nutrition is absorption, though some of them produce food through photosynthesis. Example. Here's the example. Kingdom Monera is the example. First is the bacteria. Yes, is also the another category is the prokaryotic cell. Yes, the first category is the bacteria. I just write this is the bacteria. Second is the uh, blue green algae. Now, I also explain about the super kingdom to eukaryota. These are eukaryotic, well structured nucleus, unicellular or multicellular, and live individually or in a colonial form. The first kingdom to protista characteristics. They are unicellular or multicellular individual colonial or filamentous and the nuclei in their cells are well structured. Their cells contain nuclear materials covered by a nuclear membrane. In the chromatin material there is DNA, RNA and protein. All types of cell organelles are present. Their modes of nutrition are absorption in case of photosynthesis. They accomplish their sexual and asexual reproduction by the process of mitosis and conjugation. 
Here's the consolation. I also give the example union of two cameras with the structure similar but biological different respectively. No embryo is developed in them. Examples. Amoeba, Paramecium and LG, Diatone, Spirogel, etc. I also example the first example is the Amoeba. The example is the another category is the Amoeba. Okay? And the third structure is the kingdom tree, fungi, the very important topics in the nature, fungi, characteristics. Most of them are terrestrial, saprophytic or parasitic. Their body is the constitute of a single cell or mycelium, narrow tape leg part. The nucleus is well organized. The cell wall is composed of chitin. Their mode of nutrition is absorption. The photosynthesis apparatus chloroplast is absent. They reduce by haploid spores and their cells divide through mitotic cell division. Yeast, penicillium, mushroom, etc. Kingdom 4, plenty. Kingdom 4, plenty. They are photosynthetic and sorry, I also gave the example of the fungi. Here's also the example fungi is the yeast. I also draw this structure is the Yeast is also the very important structure for the fungi. Now, kingdom for planting. Here is the kingdom for planting. Very important topics, characteristics. They are photosynthetic and eukaryotic. Advanced tissue systems are found in them. They develop embryos and diploid stage starts from it. They are mostly terrestrial, but there are also many aquatic species in the kingdom. Their sexual reproduction is angio and isogamous. My dear students, I also explain what's the meaning of the N isogamous. Here's the N isogamous. Is the, I also draw this the structure is the female structure and is also the male structure and also the male structure. Here's the female structure. I just draw a gamete and the male structure. I also draw a gamete. Please everyone see the board. Here's the female structure is the gamete is the large and it's also the small shape. It's also the big shape and it's also the small shape. When they are also the link and, and, and they form the gamete zygotes. Here's the formation of the gametes of zygotes. I also explain the another name is the N isogamous. Here's the anisogamous, the sexual reproduction which is happened by union of structurally and the physically different gametes. They are archaeogenates. Archaeogenates plants with female reproductive organs and flowering plants. Examples, examples, green plants. Division of plantae are shown in the chart below. The moss and also the fern and also the gymnosperm and also the angiosperm. Fourth kingdom and also the last kingdom is the kingdom Animalia. Here is the kingdom Animalia characteristics. They are eukaryotic and multicellular animals. Their cells do not have non-living cell walls, plastids or vacuoles in them. As there are no plastids in their cells, they are heterotrophs and so they depend on other organisms for their food. After ingestion, they digest their food. They have advanced and the complex tissue systems. Sexual reproduction is their usual way of reproduction. Is their usual of reproduction. Haploid gametes are usually produced in the reproductive organs of mature and diploid females and males. Embryonic layers are developed at the time of their embryonic development. Examples. The entire invertebrate and vertebrate animals accept protein. Thomas Kepler Smith from Oxford University divided the kingdom protista of living world into two groups, protozoa and also the chromista, and renamed the kingdom monera is the kingdom of bacteria in 2004. In this way, he grouped the living world into six kingdoms. You will learn more about it at your higher level education. 
you will be introduced gradually in the consequent chapter of the characteristic of the animals of different kingdom mentioned here. Mandarin students today also give the example of the living world and also the chart of the living world. In the living world, I also explain about the super kingdom 1 and also the super kingdom 2. Basically, super kingdom 1, I also, I also learned the, about the prokaryota and the super kingdom 2, I also learned about the eukaryota. Yes, the super kingdom 1, the prokaryota, basically, it also have only the one kingdom. Yes, the one kingdom is the protista and also the monera. Not the protista, it's also the only kingdom one, the monera, and the example is the bacteria. The second super kingdom is the eukaryota. I also learned about the kingdom protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia, and also the plantae. I have also the draw, the moss, palm, gymnosperm, and angiosperm, and we also learned about the examples of the protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. I hope, my dear students, if you learn and also the clear about this, the concept of this chapter. Yes, the concept of this chapter, the aim of classification. The aim of classification is to acquire knowledge of the groups and subgroups of organisms, to maintain documentation of accumulated information systematically, to present the knowledge concisely and to take steps to identify the organisms and be conscious to conserve the usual organisms for the well-being of the living world. Hope everyone is also the fine. Goodbye. My dear students.